I'm Katherine Paulson. Hi, I'm Sarah Paulson. If, if you, you can't, can't already tell, we're, we're identical, identical twins. <laughs> <laughs> Finishing each other's sentences and saying the exact same things at the exact same time are typical everyday occurrences for us as twins. However, since most of you probably aren't identical twins, you probably don't experience this on a regular basis. And despite how similar Sarah and I really are, we've each managed to develop a unique identity, discovering ourselves through each other. It all started in 2004, when our parents were putting us in preschool. Many people told them they should put us in different classes so that we wouldn't grow up competing with each other. The idea was the only way for us to establish our own identities was to be separated. But our parents decided to keep us together, giving us the chance to determine our own paths. They put us in the same class all through our schooling, which allowed us to become best friends and be together 24-7. And this actually ended up being the greatest gift our parents could have ever given us. So thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> and now, if you ask most of our friends how they tell us apart, they would probably say by our different personalities where I can be more easygoing at times, Sarah is usually more straightforward. <laughs> so how did we get there, though? Because when we were little, we couldn't even tell each other apart. <laughs> <laughs> One day, my grandma held me in front of the mirror and asked me, who's that, Sarah? And I literally responded, it's Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up together, we were always considered a single unit. Most teachers, coaches, or really anyone too scared to call us by the wrong name refers to us as Paulson instead of our own names. So the big question is, how did two people with the exact same DNA who grew up doing everything together become so independent and unique in who they are? We believe there are two major aspects that factor in to truly forming your own individual identity. The first, is the people you surround yourself with. And the second is how you respond to life experiences. Ever since we were little, our grandpa, Pops, would always give us all sorts of life advice. But the advice he seemed to repeat the most, no matter the stage of our life, was to always surround yourself with good people. We realized this was so important, because the people you surround yourself with are the ones that influence you the most whether it's what you're doing on the weekends, what you talk about, what your priorities are, or the decisions you choose to make. One of our priorities has become soccer. We both love to play and have influenced each other so much when it comes to practicing extra on the weekends or making other sacrifices. We've instilled in each other a habit of working hard, not only for ourselves, but for each other. It is through each other that Sarah and I have found our identities, and it's through the people you surround yourself with that, influ in, that influence the person you become. These are the people who know you the most and shape who you are. They know what you hold dear and keep you in check in times of stress or change. Since Catherine and I have become so unbelievably close, we know each other so well and are able to bring out the best in each other. She tells me when I'm stressing out too much and I should really just relax. And I can tell her when she's being too stubborn and we should just compromise. Growing up together, we hold each other accountable to who we are. We compete not to bring each other down, but to elevate and support each other. All these aspects we've learned from growing up together have instinctively transferred into how we treat others. We genuinely care more about the well-being of others because we've seen how special it is for us to always have some, your best friend around and be there for them. Being able to determine what you value, why you value those things, and how to best live out those ideals are all shaped by the, per, the, by the people you surround yourself with and all the experiences you go through. Now, it's not only the people in our lives, but it's the experiences that we go through, both positive and negative, that build the core of our character. In the spring of 2018, I tore my ACL. And this was the first big experience that Sarah and I couldn't really go through together. But we each learned something different about ourselves from it. 
driving to practice by myself all of a sudden, not having Catherine to sing in the car with, and not having her to practice with after was really weird at first. Although, despite not having her physically right by my side, I soon realized and felt that her influence and everything she had instilled in me was still there because it's a part of who I am. As for me, I learned that when you go through a struggle in your life, you're faced with a choice. You choose to either let that negativity consume you or you take it as a challenge and become an even stronger version of yourself. Staying positive, not letting this injury overwhelm me, and having Sarah right by my side to go through it from surgery to now being back playing on the field has made me physically and mentally stronger than I ever thought I was going to be. No matter the severity of the experience, it is how you handle it. That defines who you are. For example, Oprah Winfrey, who grew up in extreme poverty and was both physically and sexually abused, was able to overcome those struggles. Winfrey says it was the influence of her grandmother which gave her a positive sense of herself that encouraged her to continue to speak in public to become one of the most successful media figures in the world. Everyone goes through struggles in their life, big or small. But as renowned Carnegie Mellon professor Randy Posh said, it's not about the cards you're dealt, but how you play the hand. Every experience we go through, every person we encounter, influences who we become. Our parents gave us the gift of growing up with someone to go through life with. We were dealt certain experiences that brought us even closer together and allowed us to learn more about ourselves. We found our identities through each other. And this taught us that it is through the people you surround yourself with in all the experiences you go through that influence that person you become. I wouldn't be the person I am today without Sarah, and I know the same goes for her. So what experiences have changed you? Who do you surround yourself with? We challenge you to focus on and improve the best parts of you and the relationships you have now, so that when you do face struggles in the future, you'll have those developed parts of who you are that will allow you to overcome any challenge and find and know who you truly are. Thank, Thank you. you.